Today, I would like to show you a solution to a relatively common problem, having a default slicer selection for selecting the latest day in a Power BI report and getting that automatically updated every time new data flows into the report. All of that by utilizing field parameters. This could be extremely useful for those who would like to create a daily invoicing summary or reports on jobs created, assigned or closed yesterday. And this can be done without leaving Power BI Desktop and without needing to learn how to use Power BI Report Builder to create a paginated report. Let's get started! Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. While there are some solutions to this problem out there, they all utilize the same or very similar approach. Either they create a new table with selected timeframes, such as last day, last month, and so on, or they add a calculated column to the calendar table where they define time periods. I've added a couple of links to the description box below so you can explore those as well. But a couple of weeks ago, I thought to myself, maybe with the introduction of field parameters, there is an easier, quicker, or more beginner friendly way of creating such a solution that doesn't involve any of the previously explored methods. The good thing is, there is one you can implement today. But make sure to stay until the end where I cover some small limitations of this solution. With all of that out of the way, let's head over to Power BI. I'm sure many of you have seen or built a report like this before. Report users can find details about the previous day's invoices by customer, by seeing the total invoiced amount, the number of customers that received an invoice on that day, and overall total sales figures. Now this all works fine and users can always use the last day slicer to select a single day. Or can they? You see, while this looks like a single date value slicer, it is actually a regular slicer with the date filled in it and the type or style is set to after. This means that if I enlarge the slicer, you will find another date, which is the last date with the sales value, currently the same date as the date on top. So if I were to select the 19th of March, the report would be filtered for two days rather than just one. It also means that when the data from the 21st of March arrives, this page is going to show details for both the 20th and the 21st, given we keep the 20th as the slicer selection here. There might be a couple of solutions to this problem, but they all share a manual approach. Let me show you. First, you could remove the slicer from the page and add the date column from the invoices table as a page level filter, like this. However, this means that every time a new day comes into the report, someone has to change that filter. I think we can all agree this is not an ideal solution, right? So now that we have agreed that we do not want to go down that path of manually selecting or updating slice row filter values, let's see what we can do to automate the process of selecting the last day. Let's look at our DAX measure for last invoice date. The reason why I add a remove filter argument is to ensure we will have an auto-generated single date that will always reflect the latest invoice date even if the selected customer has no invoices on that day. Now, because we cannot simply drag this measure to the filter panel or add a slicer to the page with this value, I thought let's create a field parameter where we reference that measure. Well, let me show you how. We go to the modeling tab, click on new parameter and select field. Rename it to time frame and add the last invoice date measure from the invoices table. By default, if we select the last date option, nothing happens. But here comes the magic. Let's head over to the relationship view and drag the time frame fields over the date field in the calendar table. Technically, you don't necessarily need a calendar table for this work. You could connect directly to the invoices table. However, let's try to follow some data modeling best practices. Now we have the relationship defined, but the report is broken. The reason behind this is that even though we have a relationship in the time frame table, we don't have the exact date. We just have a reference to it. 
but watch what happens when we adjust the auto-generated DEX code for the field parameter. By removing the name of function, we can get the value of the last invoice date measure, rather than just a reference to it. How good is that? Did you know that you can do this? I mean, I had never tried it before. The name of function is only used to ensure that the name's updated automatically if the measures or columns are renamed. Now, all of this looks great and it does work almost perfectly. There is one thing that we have to address. Head back to Power BI. Watch what happens when we refresh the report with new daily data coming in. The report breaks and the time frame slicer has a new line, but it's also called last invoice date. I mean, it looks a bit weird. And if we select the other last invoice date option, everything comes back alive. To solve this problem, we have two options. Option number one is a more beginner friendly approach. Adding the time frame column to the page level filters and setting the filter type to contains and the value to last. With that small adjustment, even when new data comes into the report, it will work perfectly. Alternatively, if you're a bit more confident in your tech skills and you have access to Tabular Editor, you can make the following changes to the time frame column. In Tabular Editor, head to the time frame table and select the time frame field. Under the group by column property, clear the existing one column and set it to zero columns. Save the changes made, and this will ensure that there won't be a duplicated last invoice date field in the slicer. Now this tabular editor trick was shown to me by Owen, who is a fantastic member of the community. Check out his blog and make sure to follow him on LinkedIn if you want to learn some good Power BI stuff. I believe this solution is a perfect alternative to a paginated report, at least for this particular use case. If you want, you can save it in the Realm and UI of Power BI Desktop. There's no need to write any advanced decks or make huge changes to your existing data model. It's all about making small adjustments here and there to create a solution that will answer business questions. But here comes the limitation. Compared to other solutions that include calculated columns or more advanced tricks, it's limited to just last date. You cannot create filters for last week, last month, year to date, or similar kind of filters. If your solution requires those fields to be added, make sure to check out the links below as they will walk you through how to set up those. With that said, it's time for your comments and questions. What do you think about this solution? Is it something that you plan to replicate for your reports? Drop all of that into the comments box below and I try my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks for staying till the end. I hope you learned something new today. If that's the case, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, check out these tutorials to take your Power BI journey to the next stage. Until the next one, see ya.